Let's remain standing for the reading of this word. We are in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. Verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and the height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, indeed, Lord, we are here gathered, Lord God, not because we are good, not because we are pure, not because we are holy. We are gathered because of your love, Lord God, who cleanses us, who purifies us, who made us holy. Oh, how fallen we are, Lord God, and yet you are never, you are never far away. As we remember, Lord God, our past state, Lord, we can see the consequences of our sin that can damage, Lord God, not only our own private life, our own personal life, but also the life that we have, Lord God, with our families and friends. So we ask, O oh Lord, I ask you, Father, cleanse your servant, Lord God. Cleanse me, O oh Father, that I shall be able to preach your word based on who you are, not based on my own understanding of your love, but based on how great and how deep your love is. That we are reminded, Lord God, that it is not us, but it is you, Lord, who have given the solution to our sinful problem, Lord. So we ask, O oh Father, guide us today. Prepare our hearts, Lord God, to listen to your word. That in all your words, Lord God, may it lead us. May we obey. May we submit. May we surrender our lives to you. So that we can see, Lord God, that everything is for your glory. That everything, you deserve all the praises. That in everything, in all the situation, events, sufferings, or challenges among life, you are always good. And you will remain faithful to sustain us all throughout this life. We submit to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. May not be seated. Well, good morning, church. Last week, si Gimmy Storya sa kung wife about sa mga mga kaagi, mga challenges, mga kung baga mga sufferings namo sa among life. Katong uyab pa mi, katong minyo na mi, katong na namis RBF. And as we remember those challenges and sufferings, mga kalisod namo, in following the Lord. For some of you, siguro makaingon mo nga, di na d'yo ko ganahan makaremember ang kasakit sa kong kinabuhi. Di na d'yo ko mo balik sa kalisod. But for us, we would still be willing to go through those sufferings and challenges. You know why? Because the past made us confident to trust God with our lives. Katutanan nga events sa mong life, mas niligo ng among pagsalig ni Lord. It strengthened our faith. Now, if same things happen today and in the future, we are confident that we can trust God because we have experienced it ourselves. Last Sunday, we revealed the Lord that based on the Bible, on His plan for us as a church, now we learned that our plan, the Lord, will include suffering, kalisod, and human as we are, we don't like suffering. So we're gonna handle kalisod sa langkina buhi. Wala man si Guru. But regardless, if na si Lord or wala si Lord sa mga life. Ang suffering, life is always hard. Given na siya. Mapubri or madato, ma-Christian or di, we have our own sufferings. And then we learn that the reason why this life is hard, because puno ug sala ang kalibutan. We are all sinful people. Walking dead, kumbaga walking zombies. 
And if ang mga walking zombies, you put them together in one place, ang result is chaos. In the same way, if you put all sinful people in one place, ang gawas anak, kagupot, kasakit, kagul. That's why if mutan na mo sa mga news karon, may mga na-rape, mga gipatay, gitulis, these are some example of the result of sin. And life will continue to be difficult because of sin. Na ang pangunta na lang na ako sa each of us, where do you stand when sufferings come? Are you standing on solid ground? Are you secured in your identity? Nga bisan pag na ako is suffering, I have peace because I can trust God. And if this is part of His plan, I will trust Him. Do you have that kind of resolve? Because only people who are saved and trusted God with their lives can experience this peace. Only people who continues to remember their past state, people who remembers to say, Give what the Lord to save them, people who remembers their identity in Christ, people who are grateful to the Lord can have this peace, can have this solid ground that in our sufferings as Christians, we are confident to trust God with our life. That's why Paul started this chapter with his life, with his identity in Christ. <coughs> Paul was in prison. Nasa sa prisuhan. Kala si Paul nga naako sa kalisod because of Christ. Mas pili o na ko maglisod ko. Puyog ang gino. Kaysa sa ako ang past na way ginoo. Walay fulfillment. Puro kasuko. Way tarong na love. Walay direction. Mas pili o na ko ang kalisod with the Lord. Remembering na di makumpara ang gibuhat ni Lord para sa kong life. Mas pili o na ko ang kalisod with the Lord because in Him na ako'y peace kaysa sa kinabuhi na happy karon puro kasakit later. Not only that we learn that God's plan involves suffering, we also said God's plan involves denying ourselves. And if we are truly safe and trusted God with our lives, if we are truly grateful sa kamayo ni Lord sa toang life, we will follow Him, denying ourselves. And lastly, God's plan involves you, involves the church. And that is to show kung unsa kamayo si Lord. Kapisan pag lain-lain atong kaagi, lain-lain atong edad, lain-lain tag barangay, God unites us. Ang purpose sa church is para mapakita sa tanan kung unsa kamayo si Lord sa tag sa tag sa kinabuhi ninyo. That you are together as one. No discrimination of status or anything in this world, but looking at each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And after stating ani tanan po said sa ato ang first verse karon when i think of all this ana si Paul nga our walk in the Lord involves suffering self denial and kita as a church to be united as one when i think of all these my knees hit the ground nga all these things dili sayon and so i am praying for you Paul prayed because he knows nga ang Christian walk he knows that ang Christianity will not be an easy journey in this world. And last week, God shares His plan sa tua, sa church. And in this information, nakatabang nato para kibaw taon sa atong i-expect as we Christians live in this life. So today, we will discuss what Paul prayed para sa church in Ephesians. And that is also applicable to us. We are going to answer the question, Are your prayers aligned with God's plan? We are going to discuss three prayers that is aligned and in a plan based on our passage. Now let's begin in verse 14. Paul said, When I think of how great our challenges, our trials as Christians living in this fallen world, I prayed kneeling down to God. Makaluhod ko sa pag-ampo. Nakatry na ba mo, Ana? Na nag-pray, na nagluhod? Dapat ba yun nakaluhod, Pastor Dads? You see, ang Bible, wala giingon, wala, doesn't command any posture sa pag-pray. Wala gibutang, na dapat nakapiyong yun ang mata, na dapat nakaanag yun ang kamot, nakaduko yun, or nakaluhod yun. But our posture will describe our emotions towards God. Di ba? Kung makita kag someone praying na nakaluhod, makaingon yun kag serious yun sa sayang prayer life. Or makita kag someone na nakahilak sa sayang prayer, makaingon yun kag serious yun sa sayang prayer life. But it doesn't mean uh, just because wala siya nagpiyong sa iyong mata, just because wala siya nagluhod, just because wala siya naghilak, dili na serious yung prayer. And here in our text, when Paul is praying na nakaluhod, it describes how serious si Paul sa iyong prayer. 
It describes how humbled si Paul in front of the Lord. Kneeling down. It gives us an idea na this is something ang murag na igihang si Paul. You see, this is one of the blessings that God gave us. Na we can talk to Him. We can pray to God. It doesn't matter kung saan ang posture. It doesn't matter kung galing ko na kadiaga pray. Any position. But what matters is your heart when you pray to God. You see, if you are truly grateful kung pasalamaton juga ka sa gibuat ni Lord sa imong life, it will reflect sa imong prayer life. You will constantly talk to Him. You will communicate to God. If every day you remind yourself sa imong previous state before ka na save what God has done sa imong life, you will constantly thank God. And that's one of the characteristics of those people nga naluwas. Kung sa mga ilang characteristics, they are prayerful people. So church, how's your prayer life? Because the health of your prayer life will reflect if grateful ka ni Lord. That's the reality. Anything that is in your heart will show in your actions. If puno ang pagpasalamat yung mong kasing-kasing, makita na sa mong prayer life. And prayer also reflects your relationship with the Lord. If you are not sure sa mong relasyon ni Lord, try to consider this. Dili ba nimo makita kung unsa ka maayo ang Ginoo nga sigid bless sa imo ug sa imo ang family bisan pag wala ka gawna una niya Imagine all these blessings removed sa imo ang life in one day and God will allow it for you to know that God is the provider that God is the Lord and I want you to consider these things not because gihadlok ta mo but because we are living in this fallen world anything can happen Consider these things. And then Paul said, I'm praying to the Father. Paul shows us the relationship that you can have when you submit your life to Him. If you submit your life to God, matawag na ni mo siya as your Father, a Father who saves. And ako lang ni i-clarify. Because anyone can call God the Father. Bisan kinsa, pwede mo tawag sa ginawa sa amahan. God the Father siya because He created all of us. Bisan dili Kristo anon can call him God the Father of creation. But dili tanan nay relasyon sa iya isip amahan. And for Christians, for mga Kristo anon, for those people who are saved, God becomes their father, the father who saves. There's a relationship. That's why Christians can communicate to God, pray to God because there's a relationship. So now we see how serious si Paul sa prayer para sa church. We see how we as a church should also be praying. A saved church is a praying church. A grateful church is a praying church. And if you don't have any growing relationship with the Lord, I encourage you to seek Him. If you don't know where to start, join a discipleship. He knows you. God knows you. And God is waiting for you. And as we move on the next verse, this is the prayer of Paul. Paul said, I pray that God will grant you strength. Paul is like saying, after all these things na gibuhat ni mo sa akong life, Lord, even including me as a sinner sa imuang plan, including the church, I kneel down before you, Lord, because, Lord, wakoy right mga yu ni mo. Wakoy right mo hang yu ni mo. I don't have anything good to bring to you, but I bring my broken life in front of you, saved in the name of Jesus Christ, who cleansed me. Hang yu ko, Lord that you will strengthen the church. That you will strengthen each person na naa sa church. That's the first prayer of Paul para sa church. It's a prayer for strength. Paul is like saying, since God's plan involves suffering, since the journey is hard, to align our prayers with God's plan, we need to pray for strength. We need a strength that is greater than the journey. And the only one who is greater is God Himself. If we are part of God's plan, He will sustain us. This should be our prayer in this life. And this is also my prayer to each of you. Nga taga ang tagpusog ni Lord. As mentioned ganina, life is hard. Given na siya. How much more sa mga Kristuhanon nga gitawag ni Lord to live a holy life. We are surrounded by sin and we need strength to continue to live this life following Christ. We don't pray nga unta din na ka maka-experience yung kalisod. 
sa giyong pasabog of James, see it as an opportunity to grow sa imong pagsalig ni Lord. If God's plan involves suffering, then your prayers should be asking God for strength nga maglikun ka sa imong faith niya. You now see how Paul's prayer connects from previous passages. Before in our past state, katong wala pa tanuluwas, we were lost. We are weak in this life. Dali na ta magbuol, dali na ta madrain, but once Christ saves you, you can ask strength from the Lord. And that is one of the blessings nga naa na to as Kristohanon. Not only that we can communicate or pray to God, but we can ask God for His strength. The Holy Spirit is in us, in our inner being. Paul is like praying, oh Lord, tagay imong church of strength according to the riches of your glory. That means, basis imong standard, Lord. Basis imong strength, Lord. And that is a strength greater than anyone. Greater than any situation. Greater than sa imong kalisod. Because it's the strength from the Lord. Dagan sa tua, living in this life, relying in our own strength. People think, okay, ra, kaya ra na ako. I know what I'm doing. Confident ra ko sa akong self. Secured ra ko sa akong self. But I encourage you, church, to try to check and evaluate your life. When was the last time that you said, that you said, di na na ako kaya? Now, when life becomes so hard, kamusta man? How are you dealing with it? Madrain ba ka, kapoy na? Ay, naiuban mga tao who thinks nga ang solusyon, ani, is just rest, pahuway ra. I think need ra kong vacation. Muna ila ang thinking. I think need ra kong recharge. I think need ra na kong itreat akong self. You see, friends, when life hits you hard, kanitanan are just short-term solution. Sooner or later, mahimura na siya og cycle. And until such time, you will look for other solution and then repeat na po dahil ng cycle. These things distracts us from the real source of strength. These things distracts us from the real source of rest. The reality is, you are always drained and tired because you are relying on your own strength. You believe na kaya rang life. You believe na focus lang yun ka sa imong self. And my question to these people is this, when are you going to realize that you need God as the source of your strength? When are you going to realize that you are living in a cycle of emptiness? When are you going to realize that you need God to find rest? Kung malumos na sa consequences sa atong decision, diha na tamo ni Lord once everything is out of control. Diha na tamo ni Lord when everything's falling apart. Because the more we run away from God, the deeper our fall, the deeper the consequences are. Unless you will realize that you are a sinner who is walking aimlessly in a world because God is not with you. You see, church, as a Christian, it's really hard, it's really painful to see people, to see loved ones suffering. Now, once magtanaw ka sila, mata, eye to eye contact, you know nga, nawada na sila, go, pa kinabuya. And that's why one of our purpose as Christians in this life is to share that hope that we have in Christ. And for us to do this, we need strength from the Lord. Praying a Lord, tagay mig strength in following you that they may be able to see you in the way we live our life. Na in our suffering, Lord, they will see the hope of Christ that you gave us. Na in our suffering, people will see that you are standing on solid ground. Na in our suffering, people will see that we continue to praise you, God, and bring blessing to others. Na in our suffering, we continue to share that Jesus Christ is the only way to live this life. And it begins by receiving Him as your Lord and Savior. Christians are called to live by the strength of the Lord. If you give your life to the Lord, it is He who will sustain you. That's the first prayer of Paul for the church. And the next prayer of Paul is in verse 17. Paul said that as you receive God's strength sa imong heart, sa imong inner being, I pray that Christ will dwell in your hearts through faith. That, that as Christ lives in you, you will continue to grow deeply in God's love. The second prayer of Paul is this, prayer that Christ will dwell in your heart. Prayer that Christ will dwell in your heart. Paul is like saying, if God's plan involves denying yourself, 
That means emptying yourself, meaning not following the desire of your heart. Then to align our prayer is to ask God to be the one who leads your heart, asking God to dwell in your heart. In short, since God's plan involves denying ourselves, we need someone to follow. We need someone to lead us. And Paul said, I pray that Christ will dwell us in your heart. Now, in all your actions, He is the one who leads. Now, in all your actions, sa tanan ni mong plano sa mong life, bisang pag-uncertain ka sa future, bisang pag ka sure what's going to happen, you follow Christ because you believe in Him. Because you trust Him with your life. If you believe na iya kang giluwas sa life niya, why paingnan, walay purpose, if you believe yung kang giluwas sa mong destination, which is hell, which is imperno, which is destruction sa mong gagalingon, then trust Him sa iyang plan sa mong life. If siya nag-lead sa mong life, then you are secured to expect that He will sustain you. Don't trust your own heart's desire because your heart is deceitful. If you believe Christ and choose to follow Christ, then He will lead you. That's what it means na si Kristo magpuyo sa inyong kasing-kasing. Tungod sa inyong pagtuo. Tungod that you believe in Him. Christ lives in you. Christ dwells in you. And when we say dwell, it means He lives. Not just mo bisita, but permanently stay in you. And that's another blessing that we have in the Lord. Not just we can communicate. Not just we can ask God to give us strength. But He can live in us permanently. Another translation, ane, that Christ will make His home in your hearts. Pasabot ana only those who believes in Christ, only those kanag sunod kang Kristo, Christ will live in the person's heart and makes it His home. Christ will not live in the hearts of those people nga mas piliyon pang sala kay saniya. But for those people nga ni dawat sa cure, people nga ni surrender sa ilang life. People who believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ dwells in their hearts. He is comfortable. He feels at home. The question is, siya ba ang nasa mong heart? When Christ is in your heart, that means you love Him above than anything in this world. That denying yourself, siya ang naguna, siya ang priority, siya ang masunod. In John chapter 14, someone asked Jesus, Lord, how can it be na nakakasamong kasing-kasing that you will dwell in our hearts? And Jesus answered that person. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. God loves us that he saves us. The question is, do you love him back? Because if you are not grateful ni Lord sa imong life, you will just ignore Him. If grateful kay ka sa gibuat ni Lord sa imong life, you will love Him back. And if you love the Lord, you will follow Him in keeping His word. That means to say, dili lang kay imong nahibawaan unsa iyahang, unsa iyahang giingon sa Bible, but imong sang gi-apply sa imong life. Jesus said, katong mga tao nga wang naghigug mo na ako, they will ignore the Bible. They will ignore my word. So the question is, who is inside your heart right now? Akong crush pastor. Hala, siya na yung pangayog kusog sa kalisod sa mong kinabuhi. Paul is like praying, Lord, tagayog strength ang imong church para Christ will dwell in each person. Para we can deny ourselves and follow you. You know why we need strength from the Lord in denying ourselves? Because it's really hard to deny ourselves. This is not an immediate change. Now, automatically, you can deny yourself and follow Christ. There will be times you will choose your heart's desire. Your worldly desires over Christ. There will be times that you will justify your sin. Okay, Raman. And there will be times that you will fail. And living in this world, modern world, kanatong generation karon, dali na kayo tama influence sa kalibutan. Instead, now we ask the Lord, if not ay decision sa tong life, Sometimes ang atong basihan kay kung unsay in sa social media. Sometimes ang atong basihan kay kung unsay trending. Ginabuhat man sa tanan, okay ra siguro. That's how this world can distract us in following Christ. Pag mata pa lang nimo sa buntag, you are already distracted of a lot of things. Distracted ka sa social media, distracted ka sa mga problems sa imong trabaho, problems sa pamilya, and Paul's prayers that God will give you strength to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. 
to follow Him through faith. That means Paul is praying for a deeper relationship ninyo with Christ. Nga dili lang kay na luwas na ka okay na or tigsimba na ka okay na. No. Deeper relationship means it continues to grow deeper. To grow stronger. Rooted and grounded in love. It's a growing relationship with the Lord. Kabantay mo ng building sa society park. Bisang pagtaas kayo, dili siya dali maguba. Dili siya dali matumpag og bagyo. It's because of its foundation. The deeper the foundation, mas ligon o mas taas ang building. The same as us. The deeper you grow in your relationship with the Lord, the stronger that you will trust Him sa iyong life. The stronger that you can stand against sufferings and challenges. If you, have, if you want to have a strong faith, then build a strong relationship with the Lord. If you want to live this life on solid ground, then nourish your roots that it will grow deeper in the Lord. That you can say, I trust God who dwells in me more than I trust my own self. In short, Christians live through, Christians live through Christ who dwells in them. And lastly, Paul said in verse 18 to 19, And now that you are growing in your relationship with God, I pray that you will be able to comprehend to understand, nimo, together with other church, together with the saints, unsa kadaku ang gugma sa Dios. Sa time ni Paul is like saying, ang gugma sa Dios dili lang para sa Hudeo. The love of God is not confined sa isa lang kagrupo sa mga tao. It's not just for the Jews, not just para sa RBF, not just for APAS, for Cebu City, but it's for everyone to know. Paul is like saying, if God's plan involves you, the church, I pray that you will have the power to understand. Paul prayed that the church will have the power to understand how great the love of Christ is. Na together as the church gather, na once makita mo, once magkita mo kada domingo, kada prayer time, makaingon mo sa inyong tapad, grabe ang kamayo ni Lord. No? For saving you, for saving each of us, for including each of us sa iyong plano. When you say you understand, when you say the word understand, it's not just knowing God's love, but experiencing it mismo sa inyong life. Nga you live this life, you live it based kung unsa kadaka, kalabda, kabaga, unsa kadip ang love ni Lord. Nga when God gives you strength, you will not just know, but experience how God loves each of us. Paul is like saying, God's love is true. Tinood ni siya. God's love is real na ma-experience ni mo siya. You see, anyone can say nga kay Bawa siya on say God's love. On sa man ang God's love, John 3.16. Anyone can say that, but dili ta nang experience it, walk by it, live by it. Kung sa ato paning context, Paul is like saying, I'm praying that sa inyong small group, as you share each other's life, I pray that each of you will look at each other with God's love. Na makaingon mo sa inyong ka-small group, maayo kay si Lord because I met you. Maayo kay si Lord because I feel safe sa inyo. Na I can experience how wide God's, God's love is for including me. And not only this, you will know God's love through each Christian. But to experience God's love for yourself, kung unsa ka deep ang love ni Lord, to forgive you, to forgive us in our dirtiest life, to forgive us our sins. That He led you to... Here's a church that He led you to these people. Nga this group will not just be your safe space, but a group who shares kung unsa ka maayo si Lord sa ilang life. That each one can say, nga bisan pag unsa ka sakit o kalisod ang kinabuhi, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is the purpose, that, that is the purpose of all those prayers na dimension ni Paul. In verse 19, he said, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, not just here, head knowledge, but here in our hearts. And if God is in our hearts, we live by God's word because we rely on the Lord. In short, Christ's likeness. That as we know Him, as we experience it, as we experience Him, as we apply His words at our life, we become more like Him. Paul is praying that you will understand how long God's love is. Because once you receive this love, this love cannot be taken from you. Regardless of any challenges or suffering, even in death, 
God's love will remain. And to be filled with all the fullness of God means to say that you can see God working in all these things happening in your life through suffering and pain, that you can rely on His strength, that Christ, where Christ dwell in your heart, that you will be able to experience how great it is to be loved by God. Dilike, how great it is to be loved by you. That in all these sufferings, you can fully say, if given a chance to be in that situation again, I will do it again. Christians live by the love of Christ. This is the very power that unites us together. So pray that you will have the power to understand God's love, to be more like Him, to look at each other as how Christ looks at us. As Paul starts this prayer describing the greatness of God, he closes this prayer by praising how great our God is. He closes this prayer by giving back all the glory to God. Paul bring, brings back all the glory to God. After stating unsa kanindot ang blessing na naan na to as Kristohanon, after praying and describing unsa kadaku ang gugman Lord to even include us, of course, the last part should point back to God. Everything is not about us. Sa tinud anay lang, we are just receivers. And so as a church, we bring back the glory to God who gave us every blessing. And our prayer should align in God's plan. And when it's aligned in God's plan, we as a church will be able to live by God's strength. We as a church will be able to live by following, the, following Christ who dwells in us, following His purpose. To live by experiencing God's love, uniting us by His love, applying His love in our life, walking in Christ-likeness that brings glory to the Lord. May we as a church will have that same prayer in Nepal. Not only as a church, but also our personal prayer. A prayer for strength. Prayer that Christ dwell in us and a prayer to understand God's love. So that in every season sa tong life as Christians, but human or day, we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray. Father in heaven, oh how great your love is, Lord God, to be included. To be included in your plan. That to be included in your plan, Lord God, our expectations are set that it's going to be hard. That this journey is going to be hard, Lord. But we should fear not, O oh Lord. Because right now, Lord, we are reminded that there is strength far greater than the journey. There is strength, O oh Lord God, far greater than the challenges and sufferings that we will experience here, Lord God. And if we are reminded, so on sa gibuhat ni mo, Lord, to save us across, to die, to suffer. Kahit na namang sufferings, Lord God, even combined, they're very small, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, that in our sufferings, we run to you, not run away from you, but we run to you and ask for your strength. That in our sufferings, Lord God, we call upon your name. We use all these blessings that we have to ask you, for strength to ask you, Lord God, the things that we need. Oh, Heavenly Father, I don't know, Lord God, the things that were, that the things, the events, the challenges that each one is facing, Lord. But I know for sure that for Christians, we have you, Lord God, who strengthens us. We have you, Lord God, who dwells in our hearts to lead us and guide us with our decisions. We have you, Lord God, that in your love we are united as one. Not by any means of our own actions, but by your love, Lord God. And by your love, Lord, we are saved. By your love, O oh Father, we are cleansed. And there's nothing in us, Lord God, na makadul minimo, Lord. There's nothing in us that we can give to you pure, because our life is so broken, Lord God. And so we ask, Lord, ang new minimo, Lord, to give us the strength that we need to follow you, to stand on solid ground that we'll be able to share 
who you are, the one who loves us most, the one who has blessed us, the one who continues to protect and sustain us, that we can share your name to others, the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. And I pray all these things, Lord God, in the name of your Son. Amen.